trophy in America for clean, healthy, refreshing drinking water. One of you will earn the right to claim America's greatest tasting drinking water. Are you excited? The final judging of our nationwide competition will be achieved by our most distinguished panel of judges in history. These individuals have been drinking water their entire lives in preparation for this culminating event. As I introduce each of you individually, please come forward to the stage to receive your official lab coat. Our first judge is a lifelong public servant who has dedicated his career to fighting for rural America. In March 2015, he was appointed by President Obama to serve as the 19th Administrator of USDA's Rural Utilities Service, an agency that has played a crucial role in helping to expand economic opportunities and improve the quality of life for rural Americans. Prior to his appointment, he was a senior staff member for the U.S. Senate Committee on Agriculture and a senior legislative assistant for U.S. Senator Blanche Lincoln from Arkansas. Great friend. USDA Rural Utilities Service Administrator Brandon McGraw. served as Assistant Administrator for Rural Development's Water and Environmental Program since January of 2008. Under her leadership, WEP has invested more than $12 billion in new loans and grants for rural water and waste disposal systems across the nation. As a result, 17.8 million rural residents will benefit from increased access to reliable and sustainable water and waste services. She has served in numerous other positions over her 24 years of public service. USDA Water and Environmental Programs Assistant Administrator Jackie Conti Lazar. she worked at the Department of Energy within the Office of Electricity Delivery and Energy Reliability, where she advised and supported the Assistant Secretary on Strategic Communications, Electricity Policy, and Stakeholder Engagement. She also managed the Smart Grid Workforce Program. USDA RUS Senior Advisor, Titi Layu Oganyale. Our next judge is a man whom I've had the pleasure to observe in action. He has served as the Director for Rural Development's Water Programs Division since October of 2013. During this time, he has focused on improving customer service by reducing application processing time. And I can tell you, he is passionate about serving the needs of rural communities. He has worked for USDA Rural Development for 23 years in South Carolina and Kansas, where he served as Community Programs Director and now in Washington, D.C. USDA Water Programs Division Director, Kent Evans. Our final judge is the Director of the Engineering and Environmental Staff in USDA's Water and Environmental Programs. She and her staff oversees and conducts the engineering reviews for water and wastewater construction projects and the environmental reviews for all rural utility service programs, including the electric and telecommunications programs. Prior to joining USDA, she served in various positions over a 17-year span at the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, including the Chief of the Sustainable Communities Branch in the Office of Wastewater Management. USDA Engineering and Environmental Staff Director, Kelly Cabino.
Welcome again to our esteemed panel. The pressure and responsibility on each of you is intense. <laughs> Just to confirm, none of you have been bribed, coerced, or influenced in any way. I need a verbal acknowledgement. <laughs> and all of you are quite thirsty? All right. The five finalists we have for you today are the best of the best. All contenders in the Great American Water Taste Test are winners of state rural water association competitions. After a day of sampling and more sampling, five front runners have emerged. Thanks to our volunteer judges for the qualifying rounds. I believe one of them is watching the live stream from their hospital bed. Unfortunately, suffering from overhydration. Now it is time to announce our five finalists in no particular order. From the great state of Tennessee, the Northwest Dyersburg Utility District. From the great state of Nebraska, the city of Scotts Bluff. From the great state of Nevada, the Glen Roof Water Cooperative. From the great state of Oklahoma, the Consolidated Rural Water and Sewer District No. 1 of Jefferson County. <laughs> Sam Wade, that's not the system he's on. No. <laughs> I didn't do it. From the great state of Kansas, the city of Emporia. <laughs> now please bring out the first of our five finalists. The judges will proceed to grade each sample on three criteria. First, the clarity of the entry. No one enjoys unidentified bits and pieces floating in their water. Of course, small and rural water systems across the nation do an amazing job of delivering clear water right to the customer's tap. Any samples you receive with floating sticks, twigs, and or small fish are clearly a hoax and should be immediately rejected. determine if a sample has a certain je ne sais quoi. If it tickles your nose, that is sparkling water and should be immediately rejected. Our attendees here today know that no one should think that bottled water is better regulated, better protected, or safer than tap water. Bottled water is a drain on the environment. The U.S. public goes through about 50 billion water bottles a year, and most of these plastic containers are not recycled. More than 25% of bottled water comes from a municipal supply. Bottled water is often sold at a thousand-fold increase in price. The smart money is on the tap water. If they take away the first set of samples,
His claim that water all pretty much tastes the same everywhere was roundly rejected by East Hampton Mayor Karen Cadeau. He's absolutely incorrect, she said. All water does not taste similar. All you have to do is get a glass of water from each surrounding community, and they're very different. Cadeau was no nonetheless happy with The Tonight Show because of the national attention it gained for the city's water. Jimmy Fallon went on to say that Coors Light came in second place, <laughs> which my dad was not happy with at all. While the judging continues, I have a question for Brandon and Jackie. I have read that USDA Rural Development has invested over $12 billion to build new and more improved water and waste disposal infrastructure since 2009. How many rural residents, projects, and businesses have benefited from this incredible revenue fund? <laughs> Jackie brought some notes. <laughs> I I am Jack, so only Jackie would bring notes to a water taste test. <laughs> And the customers you serve, are, how many, what percentage of them are rural customers? The customers you serve are all rural. We're all rural. <laughs> Charles's first tweet ever. 
And not only can he tweet, but he navigated our deep uh, fly seamlessly, right, Charles? Uh, I did. It was easy. It was simple. And I think USD is to be commended for rolling out an, e an easy to use web interface uh, that works. Well, here's why Charles is really smart and probably your president right now. He's smart enough to know if we try something new that's getting rolled out and are one of the early adopters, you might get a lot of extra help and you're trying to get a little advantage and move through the process faster. You want to see it succeed. So if you haven't signed up, sign up. If you have an application, file it through the system. We, we are we are uh, we have every incentive to help uh, move those along and make the make the electronic comic system a success. So you might get a little extra boost before the, all the crowds come through the front door and have to file. USDA will have people of just about every state association conference rolling out RD Apply and as well as talking about the online PER. Check it out. Now it is time to check in with our field correspondent, Michael Preston. <laughs> Michael, what are you hearing from rural America? Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you, Matt. <laughs> this is a uh, spin off of the infamous Fox News spot, which is known as Water's World, but this is Preston's World. And let me tell you, it is electric out here. I'll tell you, the ice keeps going down like the water. Some people are using lemon wedges. Uh, some people have already moved on to coffee. Uh, but no, things are electric out here. I actually do have one question for a friend of mine up here from New Mexico. His name is Pete. And I know that there's a lot of personal dedication and sacrifice you have to make to provide clean and safe water to your tribal customers in New Mexico. And I was wondering if you could just enlighten me a little bit on what it's like to do that on a regular basis. Well, it's, it's a challenge. I mean, uh, of course, all of you know, um, in rural waters, it's a challenge when the system, when it, something comes up and uh, issues arise in a problem in the system, like this, uh, contact your uh, heater pack or a little control module that you need to replace. And then, of course, all of you know, um, funding, it's always a need for a lot of issues, but in my case, being an electrician, a plumber, a welder, and kind of a ex custom home builder, and I do I do it all myself. And, um, it's kind of a, a cost saving for our, our community, our tribe, and um, I think I kind of requested of them to give me a raise. <laughs>
total $2,615,000 in potential energy savings annually. How important is energy efficiency in general to sustainability of small systems, infrastructure across the country? Well, that's a great question. Part of what we're doing right now is we're rolling out a lot of energy efficiency initiatives. One of them is the Energy Efficiency Conservation Loan Program, and another one that we'll be doing is um, last month, which is the Rural Energy Savings Program, which is focused on um, how to be more efficient with our energy savings and, and looking at the technology that we can spur to have greater energy efficiency uh, across the world. So it's all, it's all important. One thing is um, when we look at Hydropower systems are something that we have to incorporate into the money opportunity. So, rolling utilities is definitely looking into that, and it's something that we focus on. Very good. Thank you. With your background, I didn't, I didn't actually uh, preview that question, so I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> Being put on the spot here. This is real, the real deal. Claudette, are you adding furiously over there? Yes, she's there. She is very efficient. This is our chief financial officer, Claudette Abbott. We do not cross her. <laughs> she is incorruptible. I tried to bribe her many times because that gave very much to Mexico. <laughs> Mexico has never won the gold medal. So <laughs> um, at this time, I would ask NRWA President Charles Hilton to join me on stage to present the bronze, silver, and gold medal awards. Now is the time you've all been waiting for. In just a few moments, one of you will become part of an elite group of communities in the nation. One of you will claim the title of America's best tasting drinking water. You should help us. Come on. <laughs> Our one medal winner today is from the state of Kansas. Woo! In Kansas, we have a competition also, you know, and the city of Emporia wins it quite frequently, but there's about four or five cities that always compete at the top. And Public Wholesale 4, my, where I used to be a manager, won it in 2003. So Emporia has been wanting this for a long time, but matches. So now they have it, congratulations.
This is uh, my first trip as a uh, representative from the state of Nevada to the National Rural Water, Water Rally. I'd like to thank National Rural Water. This is something else, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to all of our finalists, Nevada, Oklahoma, Kansas, Tennessee, and Nebraska. Any final comments from our judges? Brandon? I just wanted to thank you all for this week. Uh, I know the Secretary was here yesterday and he enjoyed being able to come over and speak to you all and talk about the important work that you all do. Uh, we appreciate all of your efforts. We know that you're advocating for a lot of our initiatives on the Hill. We certainly appreciate that and appreciate all the work that you do in your community. And uh, also, while well, I have the microphone, I want to thank uh, RRUS staff. Jackie's got a great team. She does a great job. Uh, Ken and Kelly. And I know that some others are here as well. Uh, they work hard every day and want to make our programs as accessible and help you work through as many issues as they can. And so I appreciate all the work that they do. Uh, and thank you all for having us. This was fun. And we, we appreciate it. has lived it from multiple vantage points. And so we're very happy to have someone who comes from the rural town, has represented uh, uh, folks in that area uh, in his roles with various uh, congressional offices, has you know, been the architect of the newest farm bill, um, and now comes to us and is very supportive of the program. So thank you. Thank you very much for uh, coming to us. We appreciate having you. Um, and for all of you, it is no small thing to have an administrator, an undersecretary, and the Secretary of Agriculture at a rally. It is a huge deal. And what it should say to you, what you do, is very, very important. We know it's important. You know it's important. But sometimes as you're going through your day-to-day -day life, you forget. It just becomes part of what you do naturally. Um, take a moment this week and take in just how important what it is you do every day and how much is recognized here in DC. And thank you for everything you do. associations as they advocate for small rural towns whose sizes belie the responsibility that they share for large portions of America's food and energy production capability. Water is our lifeblood in this country. Thank each and every one of you for the work that you do. God bless you. Safe travels home.